Many sequential algorithms, such as hypothesis testing and bandits, require us to bound the probability of large deviation for a random walk. A very common bound is Hoefding-styled bounds that state that a random walk can have small probability crossing a bound, scaling asymptotically as square root of n. However, this bound only applies to a fixed time n, but it fails when n is itself a random variable. This makes it significantly less useful, as most algorithms make decisions not at a fixed time, but a random time, dependent on the actual samples observed. We need a bound that is adaptive to any evaluation time to be applicable to these problems. In fact, for a bound to hold for any time n, it is both necessary and sufficient for the random walk to never cross the bound for all time n up to infinity. For any bound that scales asymptotically at square root of n, it can be shown that threshold crossing is almost sure to occur sooner or later, even though it is unlikely to occur at any fixed moment. It is a known fact that boundaries scaling asymptotically as n log log n is both necessary and sufficient to bound the probability of ever crossing. As our contribution, we provide the tightest bounds known to date and achieve state-of-the-art empirical performance on a variety of problems while retaining good theoretical guarantee. In particular, we show that this bound has controllable crossing probability and is significantly tighter than bounds in previous works. We also analyze batch sampling schemes where we sample a batch of samples at each time step. Alternatively, this means that the bound is only evaluated at certain predetermined time steps. We show that any bound asymptotically larger than square root of n admits a batch sampling scheme with controlled error, while any bound asymptotically is equal or smaller do not. In particular, if we only evaluate the bound at the sparse blue vertical lines shown here, then we can obtain a bound with better constants than before. This often leads to improved performance in practice. We show that our algorithm significantly outperforms state-of-the-art alternatives on hypothesis testing to see if a random variable has positive mean and best arm identification. For detailed information about the implementation and baselines compared, please refer to our paper.